Hi folks, Rosemary here with Travel with Row. Today we're gonna to talk about the 25 must pack items for your Disney cruise. Stay tuned. Okay, so you're getting ready to go on your Disney cruise. Yes, right, this is very exciting, but now you gotta wonder about, well, what do I pack? Oh my gosh, there's so much to think about, so much to do on these cruises. That's incredible. We're gonna go over all of that today. And I also have a checklist, a little printable checklist that I made. This is on my website, so I'll link to it in the video description below. So you can print this out and have it with you or even just take a screenshot on your phone so that you can go through that. Now, we all know the basics, right, of packing. There's shirts and shorts and shoes and underwear and two bathing suits and, you know, something to pack all your little travel documents. You need your passport, your port arrival form, um, things like that. I use one of these folders because it folds over something like this so all the passports and stuff don't fall out. So we're gonna go over 25 of the things that you maybe haven't thought of yet. Things that will make your cruise easier or more fun and just generally things that are good to keep in mind. It's all on my printable list, the stuff that's extra and fun, the stuff that you maybe didn't think of but you want, and the basics. Okay, also, I am mostly talking about warmer weather cruises here, so focused more on the Caribbean or Mexico or Bermuda, you know, maybe even Hawaii, but you know, not Alaska. <laughs> Alaska, you need the coats and stuff, so I'm not talking about that. But some of it still applies. So, number one is costumes. Oh, there is so much opportunity to dress up on a Disney cruise. My favorite, of course, are the Pirate Nights. These are on most Bahamian and Caribbean cruises. If you're going somewhere else, you might have a different type of party, but the Pirate Nights, these are great. The original four ships will give you bandanas. The Wish does not because they hand out the fairy wands instead. Now you can go all out and wear a full-on costume and bring your pirate swords. You know, real knives, not allowed, they're prohibited. Plastic pirate swords, plastic lightsabers, those things are okay. And you can go all out and dress up completely as a pirate, or you can just stick a bandana on your head or wear a t-shirt, you know, that says Instant Pirate Just Add Rum or just Pirates of the Caribbean or something like that. Either way, it's a lot of fun. I definitely suggest dressing up for something. Now, if you are going to a Star Wars Day at Sea, a Pixar Day at Sea, a Marvel Day at Sea, there's even more opportunities to dress up with different characters to match them. On any Disney cruise, you're gonna have lots of princesses. And then the original fabulous cast here, Minnie and Mickey and Goofy and Donald and Daisy and Pluto, and you could dress like any of your favorites, you know, Mickey or Minnie, especially Captain Mickey or Minnie. And you got all the different princesses. You can dress as a prince or a knight as well. You can dress as a captain. One of my favorite trends is on the new ship, The Wish, there's the 1923 restaurant and people have been dressing up as flappers, you know, fabulous Roaring Twenty costumes. And I think that's amazing. It's such a great trend, a lot of fun. My point is, is that you can go ahead and dress up. You don't have to wait for the Halloween cruise to do it. And, and Christmas, oh my gosh, I love it when everybody wears their matching Christmas PJs. It's just so much fun. And you guys will not regret these photos. It's just great. It's one of the immersive experiences that make Disney cruising so amazing. Number two is autograph books. There's so many meet and greets with the characters, uh, all different characters. You can stand in line and get them to sign your autograph books. Some people get those photo mats, you know, that go inside the frame and around the photo and you can have the character sign that and then put a picture of your cruise in it. And that's just a really cool souvenir too. But the, the autograph books are just a lot of fun for the littler kids. I, it's, it's magical getting Ariel or Belle to sign your book. It just kids love it. Number three is glow sticks. I, and I just, I, this might not be the first thing that pops into your mind when you're going on a cruise, right? But glow sticks, these things right here are a party in a bag. I love these things. I buy them for birthday parties and sleepovers, for examples. They're such a hit. 
and so they're great for things like pirate night or you have the fireworks at sea that sort of thing um as long as you make sure they don't fly off into the ocean you know they, they make it into the garbage but these are bracelet size i bought these somewhere really cheap i can't remember but you got like 12 bracelets in here if you string like three of them together it makes a necklace these things are just always fun for kids like i said party in a bag so and look it takes up like no room in your suitcase so you know come on number four is lanyards now if you're a disney castaway club member you've been cruising a few times they'll provide you with one but if this is your first time you got to bring your own all right now a lanyard is something if you're not aware you wear it around your neck and it can help you hold things this is i actually grabbed my harley quinn one today so you know I need to check out my girl here but i figure she's also kind of got like mickey mouse colors mickey mini colors is that is that just me i think i would totally go um now i am actually gonna wear one of these for the most part because the lanyards start to bother me they have these little retractable badge holders so i suggest these as well some people just put their key to the world cards in their pockets in their phone cases things like that either way though you want to have a convenient way to carry around your key card it is the key to your stateroom door it's got you know your dining times on it it's how you make charges on the ship sort of like if you were in the park it would be like a magic band you know you charge it to the the stateroom and like on castaway they don't really like cash or anything there so you got to bring your card anyway and that's how you make purchases so you need an easy way to carry it now the good thing about lanyards is that they come in like every style out there so if you are really into cinderella or grogu or what whatever you're into you can get a lanyard or matching ones for your family whatever you're into just remember you'll want some convenient way to keep track of your stateroom card Number five, another fun thing is binoculars. Now, okay, if, if I was going to Alaska, I would invest in a really nice pair, kind of like my mom has really nice binoculars, but these are actually just some little cute binoculars we picked up at Red Rock Canyon um, a couple years ago in Nevada, you know, just to see the sights. So they, they do work, they're not super powered, but they're enough that it really helps kids feel like explorers they are out there adventuring you can stand on the deck you can watch as you're pulling into a port as you're pulling away you see another ship on the skyline it's just a really fun option for kids and again not that big so it doesn't take up a huge amount of space in the suitcase okay number six i'm, I'm sort of running out of one-handed fingers here so you know number six <laughs> beach toys Okay, so now this depends on whether or not you're going to a beach, but yeah, most of the Caribbean, Bahamian, Bahamian ones, they go to Castaway. So if you're going to Castaway Key, if you're going to the Bahamas, somewhere like that, you know that you're gonna to go to a beach, it's important to consider whether or not you really need beach toys. For little kids that absolutely adore playing in the sand, you're probably gonna to wanna to bring maybe like one cheap little shovel and a couple of buckets, and I do not mean giant beach buckets because they're, they're quite large instead what i got here are a couple of collapsible bowls okay these are not going to make you award-winning sandcastles but they can carry water they can carry sand and you can make little piles with them it's still my suggestion you want real beach toys bring real beach toys or castaway key usually has some for sale at Disney prices, but they're there. It's a good souvenir if that's what you're into. But if you're trying to find something that does not take up a lot of room and you wanna save yourself some money, these things are actually available usually at a dollar store, a dollar tree, something like that. So, you know, and they're reusable. It's not the type of thing that I'm gonna throw out once I'm there, you know, like a waste of plastic. These things I can hang on to. I can actually use them for my dog when we go camping because you just rinse them out. The dog doesn't care if they've been used with sand. They fold up throw like maybe one shovel in there with them and it takes up almost no space. You also want to consider beach toys for the big kids, and the adults as well. Waterproof phone case is really handy. You want these things and you want them ahead of time because usually when you go to a beach, a water park area, you can buy these things. It's seriously marked up prices, but they're really cheap to get a hold of ahead of time and 
you know, they, they keep your phone safe. This is not really a toy, but if you're going to a beach, and even if you're not just on the cruise in general, please remember sunscreen, please, please, please. Um, be careful with spray sunscreen because you don't want to spray all the people right next to you. You're trying to put on sunscreen and the person next to you gets a mouthful of it. It's, it's unpleasant. And I, I carry around little things like this. Sometimes if I'm walking around somewhere, they're much easier to carry just to redo your face and your shoulders. But sunscreen is important. It is not only hot in the Caribbean and surrounding type areas. Like I live in Florida. So just know that, for example, when you're out swimming, the sun, even on a cloudy day, the sun bounces off the water. It's just, you will end up with massive sunburns if you're not careful, especially in the afternoon. So think about that after lunch, you usually get worse sunburns. So remember to reapply, remember to bring it in the first place so you don't have to pay for it once you get there. So along the lines of beach toys, you might want to consider bringing some of your own snorkeling equipment, not scuba equipment, snorkeling equipment. So in other words, if you already have your own snorkel and mask and fins that you like, you can bring them yourself to places like Castaway Key. Another thing to think about is if you're going in the winter, you might want some sort of neoprene wetsuit, the type that keeps you warm, not just a bathing suit that like you might want a bathing suit that covers all your arms and everything for the little ones to reduce how much sun they're getting. But if you're going in the winter, yes, you can still swim, but consider bringing a wetsuit that's going to keep you warm. Okay, so number seven is over-the-counter medication. Now, yes, you can get some medicine on the ship. There's little seasickness pills outside the clinic, that type of thing. But you have to remember other stuff like the stores are closed at port. So you want to hop into Mickey's main sale and grab some Tylenol or something. If you're at port, you can't go in. The stores are closed. You can go to guest services and usually get a small amount of something, something to tide you over. You also have to take into consideration that they might have limited stock. I sometimes refer to this as like a mini suitcase pharmacy. <laughs> It's, it's on my packing list. Some suggestions is I bring stuff with me. Uh, not in the boxes like this, I, I take them out. But essentially, like I even bring little wipes and stuff like that. Disney ships are very clean, but you know, there's, it's still a ship, it's still an enclosed area. But you wanna bring things like pain meds and allergy pills, or you know, with the little ones you, you might want to bring some liquid ones but also don't forget things like band-aids and triple antibiotic cream because you know i know that when my kids were little there there was nothing like you know you get a boo-boo the band-aid fixes everything you don't want a boo-boo to ruin your vacation along those lines also something like swimmer's ear i have had so many incidences of my kids splashing around in a pool somewhere all of a sudden they get an ear full of water and they're just miserable <laughs> until you can get that fixed you wanna think about the type of over-the-counter medicine that you use regularly and try to bring little bits of it. And don't forget your prescription meds either, <laughs> of course. And um, take pictures of the prescription bottles or copies of the prescriptions with you. You can see my disability packing list for more info, that video that I did. But it, it's it's important in case you run out or you, you need to get a refill somewhere or just prove that it's it's really yours you you want photos if they're not in the original bottles so along those lines of the over-the-counter medicine is also the seasickness medicine not everybody gets seasick and you might not get seasick especially if you have great weather but storms happen all the time. That's the thing I tell people about Florida with like, you're going to Disney World, it rains all the time in Florida and people don't realize that. <laughs> it's like, it rains a lot. And even down in the Caribbean, yeah, it's beautiful. They still got storms. You can still wind up with a ship that's going like this. And now me, I'm the type of person who gets motion sickness on a swing set. So for me, you know, like my husband and I, we take, this is over the counter dram, I mean, but, you know, there's a lot of different types of seasickness medicine out there. Dramamine works fine for us. Make sure you start taking it if you're prone to seasickness. Make sure you start taking it before you get on board and you might even want to take it for a day or two afterwards, depending on the length of your cruise, because your body will then be used to the movement and then you get on dry land and you get kind of weird. But this stuff you need to take before you get sick if you want it to work 
best. Now they also have, for example, kids stuff. So the kids version is chewable. There are seasickness patches. These patches go behind your ear or on your belly. There's also essential oils that you can use that do similar things. You put it behind your ear and it's supposed to help. I have not tried it, cannot speak to that. The same as like they have those bracelets with the pressure points. Um, the pressure points help for seasickness apparently. Again, I have not tried those because I usually stick to the Dramamine and that's usually enough for me. There are other food options you can try. I've heard that green apples, the acidity in them is, is good. I see that tip all over the place. I haven't tried it myself yet, but good to know for the future. But one of the things I do is I have like ginger candies. Um, this is a new brand that I haven't tried yet, but I like to get different types of candies that are just the ginger in them, sort of like ginger ale, can help settle your stomach. Ginger ale is something that you can usually find on a Disney cruise. But since I'm, I'm showing you these, I want to mention that everything you bring on the ship that is like food or food related, everything has to be factory sealed. It has to be in the original manufacturer's packaging. You cannot bring homemade food or, you know, pre-separate your goldfish into individual baggies ahead of time. You can't do that. So keep that in mind even for medicine or food is everything has to be factory sealed. Number eight is shoes. So of course you're gonna bring shoes, right? But you need to think about what you're gonna do on the cruise and what you're gonna have on your feet when you're doing it. So for example, some excursions require sneakers or closed toed shoes. If you're going on the newest ship, The Wish, they have the Incredicourse, which is uh, sort of like a giant bouncy house maze and it requires socks. They, they won't let you on it barefoot, so you need socks. The decks of cruise ships tend to get very hot. So you're gonna want something on your feet. Even if it's just flip-flops, you'll want something. Some people like beach shoes. So if you're going, like water shoes, I mean, water shoes for the beach. If you're, if you're going somewhere and you're sensitive to the sand or the rockiness or the shells, you might really wanna consider some water shoes, um, especially for your kids. One more thing, if you're going to a nice dinner fancy dinner, you might need some nice, nicer shoes than what you're planning on just wearing around day to day. So it's just something to think about. There's not really a massive dress code for Disney cruises. So one of the things that, that I like about it, you, you don't have to dress up super fancy, but you don't want to show up and realize that you've only packed sneakers to go with, you know, your suit because you're dressing up for your anniversary. Or maybe you do. I am all about sneakers, let me tell you. But generally, just think about what you're gonna do and what you're gonna want on your feet as you do it. Number nine is a fold-up hamper, a collapsible one. So this is my collapsible hamper. Folds up real nice and small. Takes up almost no room in my suitcase. I'm gonna pop it open for you. It's kinda big. Woo! All right, now this is a single size hamper that opens up. It's been well-loved. There's a few holes in it, but it works perfectly great for holding clothes. The main reason behind this is organization. Like, yes, you might do laundry on your cruise, especially if you've gone to a park beforehand, or, you know, if you have a kid who manages to like spill something all over every one of their outfits, you never know. So doing laundry, yeah, it's convenient to be able to go and carry this to the laundromat on board if you really have to, but mostly it's just because there's a limited amount of space on cruise ships in the stateroom. So this, you can just shove it in a corner somewhere or up against the wall. And then you can have your kids, you know, just throw everything in here, even you. And then when it's time to go home, either shove this into your suitcase or just, you know, throw everything in and fold it back up, whatever works best. It's really just for convenience and organization. Number 10, packing cubes. Now, my packing cubes here, they're not exactly packing cubes. Uh, I'll get to why you want them in a second, but I've kind of gone the non-traditional route and actually picked up some under the bed storage bags from the Dollar Tree. So for a buck 25, I got these things, one for everybody. The reason behind that is because while really high quality packing cubes, yeah, they're convenient, but they've really gone up in price. The more popular they get and the more everybody's uh, selling them, they get really expensive. These are approximately 11 by 11 by six inches. And 
more than big enough to hold what you need. Now again, for organization, the purpose behind these is that cruise ships sometimes don't have as many drawers as hotels do. You'll probably end up with a couple of drawers and it depends on the ship again and that sort of thing, but th there's not a lot of drawers and you can fit all of your underwear, socks, bras, bathing suits. Usually if you roll them up and stick them in here, then all you gotta do is take this out of your pack, your, your suitcase, <laughs> not your backpack, but you take this out of your suitcase, you stick it in the closet, boom, you're unpacked, at least for all the, the littles. You could also use them for rolling up shirts and shorts and stuff. I usually just use them for bathing suits and undergarments and socks. So I do suggest bringing some sort of packing cube or under the bed storage mini boxes, something to help you organize your stuff. Number 11, also great for organization, but multi-purpose is baggies. So, uh, this right here is a gallon size and quart size. They are good for multiple reasons. If you're avoiding plastic, you can still find little reusable bags, but essentially they're great for when you're packing, things that might leak, certain toiletries. Uh, for example, I, I always bring toiletries with me. Yes, on the Disney Cruise, they have very popular shampoos, conditioners, face soap, body soap, body wash, that type of stuff, but I and my kids have very sensitive skin, so I always have to bring my own. So you can put stuff in these when you're packing, but they're also great for things like when you buy souvenirs. I, I don't know how it happens, but somehow my kids manage to pick out like a souvenir and it's got a bunch of little itty bitty pieces with it. And you're like, ah, oh, this is all over the hotel room, you put it in a baggie, just helps. Also really great for at the end of your cruise, if your bathing suits are still wet, you know, especially because for the most part, you'll be putting your luggage out the night before, unless you're carrying it off with you. But even then, you're packing the night before, your bathing suits might be wet, and no matter how much you wring them out, or even roll them up in a towel, it doesn't matter, they're wet, you don't want them touching everything else and getting everything else all wet, that's what the baggies are for. So they're great for protecting that, or if you're gonna go to the beach, you wanna put, you, you forgot a waterproof phone bag and just want a little bit of protection while it's sitting on the beach chair, you can use these or for money or whatever else you need for keeping stuff dry. So I always suggest tossing a couple of baggies into a suitcase whenever you travel because inevitably there's always some sort of reason that they wind up being really useful. Number 12 are magnetic hooks. Now these are itty bitty little magnetic hooks. You can buy much bigger ones as well, but I like things like this. They're small, they're tiny, they take up almost no room in my suitcase. That's why I get these and I don't get the really big ones, you know, that can be used for hanging up whole backpacks and purses and stuff. These are great for little things such as hanging up lanyards, hats, can hang up bathing suits on these to dry. They hold more weight if you attach them to the ceiling than the walls, but the important thing to remember is that for the most part, cruise ships are magnetic. The walls, the ceilings, the doors, things like that. So you can use these for all different kinds of functions and just to keep your room a little bit more organized, keep stuff off the floor or off the desk. You can put a couple of these next to your door and just hang up your lanyards or, you know, even your, even your retractable ones just something that you can keep them somewhere handy because you need those all the time. Now, I know I said bathing suits and some of you are gonna be like, but you know, you can just hang those in the shower, right? Like, yep, the cruise ships have the same thing you have in like all the Florida hotels where there's the shower wall has a little nozzle thing with a clothesline and you pull it out and you attach it and you've got that line in the shower that you can hang all your wet clothes over. I gotta tell you, <laughs> Personally, those things kind of drive me crazy. I really, they annoy the heck out of me because then you have a whole bunch of bathing suits hanging up and you're trying to shower and there's bathing suits in your face and I, I just, I get annoyed by them. <laughs> I almost never use them. Usually I wring out my bathing suits and hang them up in the closet to be perfectly honest. Um, but that's also what these are great for because you can hang these on the bathroom wall. Some of your lighter toiletries that aren't heavy might fit on them too. But again, bathing suits is, is another thing. But the next thing that I wanna mention, number 13 is related to the hook because it is a door card. So 
I know you're like, oh, this is an Amazon card. What am I going to use an Amazon card for in a Disney ship, right? No, it's not this. This card has been used. It's old. There's nothing on it. It's literally just for the physical card. Your light switch on the cruise needs some sort of card to turn the power on, the lights on, all that type of stuff. So sort of right next to your door, there'll be a light switch and it won't work unless there's a card in it. You're meant to use your key to the world card, your, your room card, your stateroom card from Disney. But if you've already got your stateroom card stuck in your lanyard, you're not going to want to dig it out every time to put it in there. You also don't want to chance possibly leaving the room and forgetting it in there. Now you should take the card out anyway to save power, but... I just mentioned that I like having the little hooks. I punch a hole in mine. You see this hole up at the top here so that you can just hang it right there next to your stateroom door. Some people like to put magnets on the back. You just need to make sure that the magnet isn't big enough to block it going into the slot. If there's a magnet on the card, then you can just stick the card on the wall right as you're leaving. But you know, for me, I use the hole because that doesn't block anything and then I can just hang it up as I leave. And then when I come back, boom, your power's back on. Number 14 is a fan or a sound machine. One thing you have to make sure of is that these things are cruise ship safe, but if you regularly use fans or sound machines to sleep, you'll miss it if you don't have it. Most ship rooms or cabins are fairly quiet, but if you're used to certain sounds every night to sleep, you might just really appreciate it. Or if you're someone like my husband who sleeps with the fan blowing right on them every night. Now this is an electric fan and it's tiny. In fact, this one is not particularly noisy. So this one is for the breeze more than the sound. A little bit of noise, but essentially this one is a clip-on fan. We sometimes use them camping because it charges with the USB. Um, these are, my kids keep them in their bedroom. That's why there's, you know, writing all over them, but it charges with a USB cord, which makes it handy. If not a USB one, you might want to look into battery operated ones because there's a limited number of outlets on all cruise ships. But also again, you, you want to make sure they're cruise ship safe. Some things that plug in with the long cords are just not cruise ship safe. So this one, again, it clips wherever you want and it's USB chargeable. That's why I like those. The sound machine, this one, you can see there's a cord on it, but if you go all the way down to the end, it can, you can take, <laughs> as I drop it, you can take this little piece off and it's just plugs in with the USB. So generally, sound machines and fans are allowed. You just want to make sure they're the type that either have batteries or it's a USB plug. So speaking of outlets, number 15 is going to be a multi-plug wall outlet or charger or whatever you want to call it. Sort of like a power strip, except power strips are not allowed. They are a fire hazard. So you got to be really careful that you're getting one that is cruise safe. I don't have one because I don't have a lot of stuff that I plug in. So I'll just, I'll add in like a picture of one and, and link to one. I will link to it in the description as well as on my blog. So you guys see what I'm talking about, but essentially something that maybe has a couple of extra plugs or a couple of extra USB cords where you can charge things like the sound machine or your phone. But you need to consider that the older cruise ships have less outlets than the newer ones. And even still, you might need an adapter depending on what country you're coming from and what your electronics are. So always research that ahead of time, the ship that you're getting onto, what kind of outlets they have. And then you also need to think about how many devices are you bringing with you? Now for us as a family of four, we do have four phones. We'll use the Navigator app. Even my littlest one is gonna use the Navigator app to communicate with us. But sometimes, again, and this depends on your particular family, sometimes you might have everybody's got a phone and everybody's got a smartwatch and you got a couple of tablets with you and you got a laptop with you and maybe you got a camera that you got to charge the battery so you got to kind of count up how many devices you got how often they need to be charged and think about that so that maybe you want to get an extra wall outlet just make sure it is cruise ship safe number 16 another organizational tip is clothespin or towel clips 
I actually think these are laundry clips, to be perfectly honest. Both of these are available at dollar stores. By the way, it's again, you can get really fancy towel clips if you really want to, but I like these because they're smaller. I, I don't bring all of these, by the way. I, I bring just a few. The reason that these are great for organization is if you're a little short on hanger space, you can use them to hang up like tank tops or t-shirts or whatever on the extra hangers. You can always request more hangers from your stateroom host, just FYI. But also like hanging up extra bathing suits to dry or something like that. Now the towel clips are because cruise ship decks can be quite windy, but also when you're on the beach. So example, on Castaway Key, you might want to have a clip or two so that you have some of your towels not blowing away if it's a windy day. I love the breezes that come off of the ocean, but you might have a little bit of trouble with losing your towels, so people like them for that. I also use them for organizing stuff in the stateroom. So, you know, whatever you got room for, maybe just throw a couple in your bag. Number 17, poopery. Yep, I'm going there. This poopery here is amazing, and I love the design. If you look at the design, the little octopuses, the toilet ship, just, just all of it, because the name of this one is Ship Happens. So, yeah, you're going on a vacation, you're eating rich foods, unfamiliar foods, there might be some ship swaying, might end up with some family members with some upset tummies in that tight little cabin, tight little bathroom. So something like this, man, just trust me, you spray this into the toilet before you go, no unpleasant smells escape. It just smells like coconut, freesia, and citrus. It's, it's just so much better. I was introduced to poopery when I was working. A coworker bought it for a shared toilet, you know, a little shared bathroom that was right next to the shared workspace. These things are life changing. I, they do sell s slightly smaller ones too, but I mean, this stuff, man, I recommend it. Number 18, hand soap, liquid hand soap. Now, again, I know there's hand soap on the cruises. I, I get it, but I have sensitive skin. I also have trouble with, for example, like cleaning my contacts after I've used the bar soap. I, I get this film on it, it doesn't work for me. I always travel with these things. I have even taken them camping. I'm not even kidding with you. <laughs> well, when there's actual bathrooms available. But I always take these to hotels and stuff. I have a little one that I, I toss in the closet with all of my travel supplies because, and, and they're refillable. I buy the big bottles and I refill them. This one is obviously running low. And these are just handy if you're like me, you have sensitive skin and you like them. And just remember, you're gonna be washing your hands a lot on cruise ships because again, the enclosed environments, just like when you're going to a theme park, you're around a lot of people that you're not normally around, just like airports. You're exposed to a lot of people you're not normally exposed to, which means a lot new germs. So you will be washing your hands a lot. And if you're like me, you will appreciate having your own, like you can buy a sensitive soap ahead of time or a moisturizing soap, whatever you want. I just, I recommend it. So think about that. Number 19, night lights. Now, this is a small night light. The light itself, I mean, is very small and it sort of lights up. I got this really adorable Disney princess one at, at the dollar store. Just throwing that out there, my little, I get all my night lights at the Dollar Tree, to be perfectly honest. And these can be helpful in certain situations. Now, the newer ship, The Wish, they have night lights in the bathroom that you can leave on. So if you got to get up in the middle of the night, it's okay. But some kids, I know like one of my kids just was never able to sleep in a totally dark room. So we always had to either crack a bathroom door or sometimes like if you have a closet that lights up, some of the cruise ships will have light up closets. You can crack one of those. Uh, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes the doors close on their own or, or it's too bright. So having a nightlight really is useful for certain certain kids. It, it really depends on your family. I also suggest them for 
people who are not good with unfamiliar environments or mobility issues trying to navigate an unfamiliar environment in the middle of the night in a dark room that you're just totally new to you. It can be really helpful. It's a dollar. They're small. You can buy smaller ones than this. It's really helpful for certain people. So night lights is something that you might really want on your cruise. Number 20 is a poncho or an umbrella for excursions. You're not really gonna use a poncho on the cruise ship because you know you just stay inside if it's raining and you're really not gonna use an umbrella because first of all, those can just blow right away <laughs> into another person or into the ocean. But if you're going on excursions somewhere and it, it might rain, you know, weather is, pff, weather is fickle. You're planning your cruise eight, nine months out or a year ahead of time. You don't know what the weather's gonna be when you get there. So you might want a small travel umbrella or a poncho for where you're going. If you're going on an excursion, if you're just going shopping in town, even a windbreaker can be helpful. I've used windbreakers for rainy weather and, and it just, it makes such a difference. And also on that, that along those lines, if you're going on an excursion and it's sort of jungly, consider bug spray. Just, just throwing that out there, bug spray is, is useful. <laughs> But think about something, it's, this is again one of those things, if you're going on an excursion, think about what you're gonna need when you get there, possibly some sort of poncho or windbreaker. Number 21, sort of related to excursions, water bottles. Water bottles are handy for the ships. Uh, these are collapsible water bottles that are sort of, you know, squishy, and I can just attach them to the outside of backpacks if I need to. I like these because of the fact that they fold up and expands. They're so much easier to throw in a backpack or something like that. But now the water on the ship is is fine. It's potable. It's drinkable. It's the Disney ships use reverse osmosis. You can get water 24 seven up on the pool deck near where all the soda machines are. There's water and they, they give you though like those little cups like eight ounces, I guess. I guess it's about eight ounces. You get little paper cups, which is fine for as you're keeping yourself hydrated during the day. Hydration is super important. I am always reminding my kids because we live in Florida, it gets hot in the sun. You get dehydrated pretty fast. But those little cups, when you're just walking around the ship, it's fine. You can get water in the restaurants. But I like to have something like this in my room. And then also for excursions, or if you're going down to Castaway Key, yeah, there's water there too, but if you're sitting out on the beach in your beach chair and you want water right then, you don't wanna have to walk all the way over to Cookies to go get the water. You know, you just want it with you. Number 22 is bags, shopping bags. So, and I know you're, you're like, well, I already have a suitcase. I already have a carry-on backpack. You know, what do I need these for? These are, this is my Magic Kingdom bag, which are really good quality. So I've been using this for a while, even though it only costs like, I don't know, what was it, like a buck fifty? They've got smaller ones too, that these were like maybe a dollar. These are sort of similar to the types of reusable shopping bags you can get at Publix or Aldi or, or places like that. And they are great for hopping down to the pool deck. You want to bring your book and your water bottle and your sunscreen, boom, you got a little bag for it. The same thing for like heading on to Castaway. If you don't have an actual beach bag, you can just use one of these to bring, you know, your, your water bottle and such. Now, I also really like bags like this because again, it just folds up so small. You just squish it in a, ba in a bag, a suitcase, the bag in the suitcase and takes up almost no room. And then if you maybe bought a few more extra souvenirs that you weren't expecting to buy or a few bigger ones, these are just great to just carry them off the ship at the end. And also because when you're putting the luggage out the night before, if you overestimate how much stuff you got between the pajamas you're wearing and the toiletries that you're keeping out, and you're going to get off the ship the next day and you're trying to shove it all into your carry-on backpack. It, it, sometimes just having that extra bag to just be like, that's it, just just throw the hairbrushes in here and let's go. It, it just can be handy. <laughs> I just, I really suggest having some sort of shopping bag. It, some people bring whole extra suitcases. I tend to lean more towards this because again, I'm not flying. If you're flying, you might wanna bring a, a duffel bag that zips up and you, you squeeze it in. 
I've brought plenty of these on airplanes as well too. But again, because I'm not flying, I prefer these to a zip up duffel bag, but some sort of extra bag is just, they always come in handy because you it, somehow you always buy more souvenirs than you think. Or like I said, at the end, it's just your clothes multiply and you got a whole bunch of stuff to carry out. They're just handy to have. Number 23 is the fun stuff. So don't forget about things like cruising ducks and of course your cruise door magnets, the magnets for your doors. I've made videos about cruising ducks. I have made videos about door magnets. So I will link to those. So don't forget these fun activities are the type of thing that add a little extra magic. It's, it's great with Disney cruising. You can do people go wild decorating their doors and there are fish extenders. So don't forget to bring your fish extender itself or the fish extender gifts. And also if you just want to pixie dust some people, bring some pixie dusting gifts to hand out and whatever else that you want to do to sort of just participate in the extra magic that goes along with the Disney cruise, don't forget your fun stuff. Number 24, speaking of fun stuff, you can also bring on some booze. Now, I always suggest going to the Disney website just to make sure the regulations haven't changed, but normally it's two bottles of wine or six cans of beer per person. So, and, and yes, that's per, per person. You got four adults, you can bring eight bottles of wine. Now, and this is if you want to, there's alcohol available on the ship. They don't have traditional drinking plans. There's, there's a special plan where you can get like, usually if they're not out of stock, like a mug for beer that you can refill at a cheaper rate and they have bottled wine packages, that sort of thing. They don't have a traditional alcohol package on, on Disney Cruise Lines, but you can bring some of your own stuff with you. There is an uncorking fee in restaurants, but you can always just, you know, uncork it in your room yourself. That's that's an option. Now, hard liquor is, is not allowed. If you go into a port, you buy rum or tequila or something, they're going to store that for you until the end of the cruise. So keep that in mind. But if you want to bring your own beer or wine, that is an option. So look into that. It's a possible way to save money if you want, but drinks on Disney cruises are very reasonably priced. They even have drinks of the day, which are discounted. So again, there's alcohol available on the ships and some really fun themed drinks as well. But if you're really tied to a specific brand of beer or wine, you do have the option of bringing that on board with you. Okay, we've come to number 25. Last item here is cash. You don't need a lot of cash per se. You can pretty much charge everything to your room, but cash can be really handy for certain things like tips and excursions. So for tipping, for example, on embarkation day, you're gonna wanna tip the luggage porters. So that, you can't charge that. You haven't even checked in yet, you know, so that cash would be for tipping the luggage porters. You can also use it to tip people on board the cruise ship. And uh, like at the end of your, your cruise as well to leave some cash in the envelopes for your stateroom host, your waiters, that sort of thing. Or just while you're out drinking, you can charge the tip to your room, like room service, totally free on Disney cruises, but you do need to tip. So you can slip them some cash or charge the tip to your room up to you. I find cash to be easier. A lot of the places that Disney goes accepts US dollars. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Caribbean, Bahamas, that sort of thing. Make sure you look ahead of time, figure out where you're going or ask your travel agent, you know, what kind of local currency is accepted. But a lot of places will take US dollars. They might give you change in the local currency. So make sure you have lots of small bills, but it can be easier to use cash on the different excursions or the, at the different ports. It can also be a little bit safer if you're just not wanting to use your bank cards where you're going. I like to use cash when I travel, also good for budgeting. Okay, so those are my 25 must pack items, but I really quickly wanna mention what not to pack. There is a list of prohibited items on Disney Cruises and I will link to this as well. I will link to the Disney official packing lists and their prohibited lists, as well as my packing list that I showed you earlier. Now, you're not allowed to bring homemade food, opened food, everything must be factory sealed in the manufacturer's packaging. No weapons, no firearms, no ammo, no daggers. Only weapons allowed are, like I said, plastic pirate swords, plastic lightsabers, that sort of thing. It says no coolers. 
I'm assuming they mean the big giant coolers because of course, if you have medication that needs to be temperature regulated, then you know you can bring that in a cooler. But keep in mind that things like specific uh, homemade baby food and stuff, again, homemade food is a no, but, and you can check out my disability packing list video for more information, but you know, you can get food pureed on the ships. The chefs will do that for you. You wanna make sure that you're not bringing anything like an iron or even a bottle warmer. They have limited bottle warmers on board that you can request from your stateroom host, but you normally can't bring them yourself. So keep that in mind. Nothing flammable, anything highly flammable. No candles, no fireworks, no flares, obviously, but no balloons either. That's the type of thing you gotta think about if you're decorating for a birthday or a graduation or an anniversary, no balloons, no candles, no scissors that have blades longer than four inches. So like the little foldable bathroom scissors, those are okay, but you were planning on wrapping Christmas presents, they're gonna confiscate your regular scissors. Keep that in mind, no scuba diving equipment, dive knives, dive spears, the actual air tanks for real scuba diving, that's a no. Also keep in mind, no illegal drugs, and this does include marijuana. It includes prescription marijuana. It includes synthetic marijuana. Do not bring marijuana on the ship. It is not allowed. Quick note of something that is prohibited in some places. This is not a Disney Cruise Line thing. Some countries do not allow you to wear camouflage. Now, this is something that, you know, we have to keep in mind. My husband, for example, wears camo on the regular almost every day, so, Make sure you pack things that are not camo. If you're going to certain countries like the Bahamas, it's illegal for any non-military personnel to actually be wearing camouflage. They will make you turn around and go back on the ship and get changed. So be careful what you're packing. No camo in certain countries. Do that research ahead of time or ask your travel agent. Okay, to wrap it up, that is my list of 25 must pack items. But please remember this list is flexible and please consider what is important to you and your family. If you don't use a nightlight and you've never used one before, then you probably don't have to pack a nightlight. If you've never used a sound machine in your life to sleep, you probably don't need it. But if you can't fall asleep without it at home, you will really appreciate having it on board. So please go over the list and consider what it is that you use and what you might need. But please do not overpack. Disney allows you to bring two suitcases per person, and there's plenty of underbed storage for all your suitcases, but if you're bringing two suitcases per person, you're probably bringing too much stuff. I'm, I'm just saying, I, I prefer to travel light, so that's why some of the stuff I've recommended is small. For example, I bring the small hooks, not the big hooks, because I like to travel, I like to pack light when I travel. So please think about that. Please do not overpack. You're going on vacation. You want to have fun. Just think about what is it you need. Look at the list and then judge for your family. So hopefully you found this list helpful as well as um, linking to the list, of course, on my blog so that you can you can print that out. So if you found this helpful at all, please like and subscribe for more videos. I will also be featuring some cruise vlogs coming up so you can come along with me on my adventures and vacations and trips as well. You can plan out some of your own cruises or get free quotes from me at travelwithrow.com. Thank you so much for watching. Happy travels. Enjoy your cruise. <laughs>